All right, all right. What's going on, everyone? Aaron here at Clean Cuts Lawn Care. Now, some of you may be wondering, like, man, what's this video about? Where, where's this coming from? But I'm dead serious, man. What happened to the real men? So, there is a specific reason I'm making this video. There's some people, guys, that I'm not friends with, but I know. Vicky knows them too. And let me tell you, man, they spend every day complaining. Complaining about this, complaining about that. This person, that person. Look, one day or one week, they will like and be friends with guy A, okay? But they're over here telling guy B, or I'm sorry, they're, you know, they're telling guy A all about guy B, who they hate, can't stand, and complaining about him every day. But next week, now they're mad at guy A. So who are they talking to? Guy B, and they're complaining to guy B about guy A. Like, what the hell is this? Now all of a sudden they completely ignore the other one. They won't talk to them. I, I don't, this is why I do not have friends. I've told you guys before, I have one, outside of my home, I mean, I have one friend that's been my friend since I was 14 years old. We're still friends to this day. That's it though, because of shit like this. So, yeah, the real men of yesterday. Now, like a week ago, we were actually, me and Vicky were outside and we're watching this situation with these guys, okay? And I, I looked right at Vicky and I said, you know, I am so grateful that I was brought up by real men. Now, I was, I was raised by my great grandparents primarily, okay? But of course, I had to go home sometimes, you know. Uh, and then my grandmother died, my great-grandmother died, and then I was home all the time. So, but anyway, you know, we had guys in our neighborhood. They were a generation ahead of us, okay? But to us, these were our heroes. These guys were our childhood heroes, you know? And they took part in raising us, bringing us up. You know, all the guys in my life, really, my great-grandfather was a real man. Um, my grandfather was a real man. My dad, even though he wasn't like the best dad in the world, you know, he was a real man. He was a tough guy. You know, he, he had been a professional boxer when he was younger. He, uh, he played three three games with the Oakland Raiders, the original Oakland Raiders. I know my phone's like bouncing all around. Um, I mean, he, he was a good dad, you know? But he, he had his faults. Went to work every single day. The guy would work 25 hours a day, eight days a week, if that's what it was needed to take care of us, you know? And that's what I mean by a, a real man. Now, these other guys, these neighborhood guys. Now, listen, none of these guys were up for Citizen of the Year award, okay? They were never going to get that. But they were very polite guys, very respectful guys. They took an interest in all of us kids in the neighborhood. Uh, specifically, um, a guy named Ricky. He was probably 10 years older than me. He lived on our street, down the block. Um, he worked at this little steel factory around the corner. All the guys in the neighborhood worked there. My dad worked there before he started his uh, trucking business. <clears throat> so, you know, we were, even though he was a lot older than us, we, we were allowed at his house. We could go there and play video games. We, we could eat there, hang out there. As long as we were being good at home, good in school and not causing problems in the neighborhood and he was like a, a good role model to us you know you know like when you're a kid and you get away from home you're cussing with your friends and whatever he he wasn't gonna have that you could not do that in front of him 
um, he would reprimand you for it. You know, he always was checking to make sure you were, uh, how were your grades? How are you acting at home? He would talk to our parents. He brought us up. And there was other neighborhood guys like that. Um, now, Ricky, tell you what kind of guy he was. I was a, man, I think I was 11 years old. And me and my friend Juan, who lived on the same street, we had a house this guy Chuck lived in. And he, like, left one day. He moved, but he didn't move. Like, all of his stuff was still there. Like an old car in the driveway. You could look in the window and see like he had moved out, but left pretty much all of the stuff. The house was a disaster. And it was like two houses down from Ricky's house. So one day, me and Juan decide we're gonna break into the house. So we, op we got the front window open and we went inside and we're in there you know we're throwing stuff around making a mess just going through all the cabinets and you know finding little stuff and taking it and then i decided to break a window out of the house um i don't remember what i what i threw through the window but it you know it broke the window and then Juan broke a window so we head out of the front window that we came in through. We get on the porch and there is Ricky leaning against the rail with his arms crossed waiting on us. And we knew we had just messed up big time. And we did. With an open hand, okay? This isn't child abuse. This is back then before child abuse was real, okay? Oh, shit. Okay, so with an open hand, he beat us up. Okay, he smacked us around, um, you know, made us cry like little girls, you know, put us on the ground screaming at us. And then he took us to our parents where we had to admit what we did. And then they did the same thing to us, but worse. And they didn't care that he did it because, you know, that's just how it was. There was nothing abnormal about it, right? So, um, I remember, man, I don't know how much time had went by, a couple weeks, I guess, and summer vacation had just started from school. Well, it was a Saturday morning, I specifically remember that. I hear Ricky on my porch talking to my parents, and I go outside, and Juan is also on my porch. I didn't know anyone was there. So my mom goes, go with Ricky and do exactly what you're told, okay? So, Ricky takes us down to the house that we had vandalized. But now there's like a nice car in the driveway, or actually it was a truck, there was like a nice truck in the driveway, and the front door was open. So he takes us inside, there's a man and a woman there. And Ricky said, these are the owners of the house that you two idiots decided to break in and vandalize. So, now to us, when when that guy Chuck left, we didn't consider the fact that he only rented the house. To us, it was like an abandoned house now. And, you know, that's kind of how we looked at it. So, um, he said, all of today and every day after, you work here for them. Do what you're told to do. And he leaves listen oh be, no before he left he asked the owner he's when he said who we were he goes uh now obviously they already had it worked out of what they were gonna do with us but ricky goes all right these are them you know he goes uh do you want to call the cops and have them put in jail now we're sweating right i'm like oh shit like ricky's really selling us down the drain here and the guy goes no i got plans for him and boy, did he. Me and Juan worked in that house for the next probably three weeks, man. And it was full of shit still. They had probably five dumpsters come. And we filled up every single one of those dumpsters. We emptied out every little piece of anything from that house. The worst was the garage because the original owner, who was a friend of my mom's, was a mechanic. 
and had this garage built. It was like a four car garage. He had two vehicle lifts in the garage, like a high, the high, like a barn almost, like a pole mart. So that was the worst. So we emptied out everything from the house and garage and loaded into dumpsters. Um, they, we had to clean that whole house by hand with towels like this. Ceilings, trim, the floors, everything. Sweep it. I mean, it, it was unreal. Um, then we had to paint the whole house inside. Me, Juan, and the um, two owners, the husband and wife. I painted the whole basement. Juan painted the whole upstairs. And then we both helped, like, downstairs. The only reason they didn't make us paint the outside is because they had someone come do aluminum siding. The house was beautiful after three weeks. And every single day on Ricky's lunch break, he came there to make sure we showed up and that we were doing what, exactly as we were told. <laughs> three weeks, maybe a little more. I, I can't remember. Um, but these were the guys who like brought brought us up every you know the kids in my neighborhood like this is what it was like now again ricky just like most of them other guys who were like role models for us they were street guys okay yes they had a job but most of their money did not come from the job now like when we were at ricky's house anytime he had a visitor we had to go we had to leave and we couldn't come back until the visitor was gone he never introduced one bad thing to us okay we didn't know anything about the bad stuff he was doing we knew but we didn't know you know he, he would not but he was a tough guy like everyone in the neighborhood was scared of him and the other guys too you know they like taught us how about being respectful um being good sons and, you know, how you act in public. Those were the guys who brought me up and the guys, the kids around me. I don't see that, like how I'm t saying with them people talking nonstop about, I, I never seen that before. I've never been around people like that, but I see it more and more. So this, that's why I, I ask what happened to the men of yesterday? You know, now as far as Ricky goes, God rest his soul, um, my parents decided to move us out of that neighborhood because it was getting really, really bad uh, right before I turned 14. And um, it probably, we probably moved over like, hold on a second, over like a three week period. Um, you know, my parents owned a trucking company, so my dad would like bring one of the trucks home um after work and we would take a truckload here a truckload there and um it took a few weeks to move on one of the trips near the end uh ricky drove his car out to see the new house and while he was out there i explained to him i i'm happy to move but then again i don't want to move you know i i liked being around him and the other guys and I said are you going to come out here and pick me up and bring me out to the neighborhood and he said absolutely not he said be happy your parents are spending the money to get you out of here he said there's nothing in that neighborhood don't come back around there and I understood what he meant and I really understand it today but at the time it's like I thought you were my friend you know and he was and I, I guess that's you know why he why he said that so man let me see it was probably about a week and a half or so be two weeks maybe before we were finished moving um Ricky would be murdered outside of the corner store that he had been going to his whole life and um, that corner store had been robbed twice, like recently. And Ricky was still out there looking for who robbed him. 
he was really good friends with the old guy who owned the store. And the story that the uh, store owner told was that some Ricky was in there drinking a pop, talking to the owner at the counter. A guy came in looking very suspect. So Ricky stayed in there with the owner to make sure he wasn't about to be robbed. The guy paid for what he got and he went outside and went like, like he walked away. So Ricky leaves the store. The owner comes out with Ricky, but he stayed right at the door. And once Ricky got like by the side of his car, the guy pops up out of nowhere with a gun and tries to rob Ricky. Uh, the owner said Ricky just teed off on this dude, blasted him right in the face. And the guy kind of like went backwards and Ricky was reaching for, to take the gun from him, and the guy was able to shoot Ricky. Shot him three times right in the chest, and uh, Ricky would die right there um, in front of the store. Yeah, that, I remember that. Man, that was pretty brutal when I heard it. Um, but that, unfortunately, that was the fate of a lot of guys in the neighborhood. Um, you know, a lot of them would go to prison, some would be murdered, um, I, I guess it just kind of came with it, you know, so, but even through the bad things, like I said, these, these were very respectful and polite guys, you know, they were real men, and it's a shame that we don't have that today to, you know, for the younger kids to kind of have a role model, you know, like I said, for all of Ricky, Ricky's faults, the things he was involved in, we, he didn't show us anything like that. He didn't bring us around anything like that. This is the guy who would discipline us for, you know, being rude to a senior citizen in the neighborhood who slapped us around for breaking into and vandalizing the home. Um, made sure we were being good at home, going to school, getting good grades, doing our homework. To me, he wasn't a drug dealer. Uh, he was my role model, you know? And then I see these guys today, I'm not even talking about like today's youth, meaning a couple of the generation and below me. I'm even talking about guys my age and older like, how did you end up like this? How, how is it... I don't even call them men. You, you're a male, but that's about it. You know, I don't know. So, I don't know. I, it's just been on my mind, and I just figured I would share it with you guys. So, all right. Hope you liked the video. If you like it, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Let me know everything I'm doing wrong, and keep the measures clean, boys. I'm out.